Hi class, Dr. Sands here. I want to take a minute to go over your upcoming assignment in the three parts. There's the second part in analyzing quality improvement frameworks in healthcare, part two, demand case study. And so we know from the video of those two gentlemen singing, DMAIC is said as demand. All right, so part two, demand case study. Uh, narrated presentation with detailed speaker notes that summarize the quality improvement process recommendations based on the case study and includes the following. All right, discussion of the detailed problem. All right, what is the problem the case study is written about? Discussion of measurement, what was used to measure to determine the problem. Discussion of how the root cause was analyzed. <clears throat> and we know that the 5Y uh, method is uh, uh, a framework. Uh, discussion of proposed improvement and impact. So it was a problem, get to root cause, uh, put in an improvement to fix the root cause, and then what was the impact of that? Discussion of how the discussion of how to improvements will be uh, maintained and controlled. So um, I've used the demand framework uh, in practice many times, and that's an important uh, component because you know once you go through DMA DMAI and I as you put in the new improvement, um, and then the C is for control. And how are you going to control the process so it doesn't, like a rubber tree, snap back and you got the same problem again? <clears throat> so on a control plan, um, it's, you know, how is it going to be measured? Um, you know, what do you have to do to derive the results? Um, how, how, what's the interval of measurements? And what's the interval of your plan? Who's the recipient of your plan? Um, usually a control plan, a control phase is three months after you Im implement the improvement. So you want to monitor for three months to ensure all that work you've done stays in place. Like I said, like a rubber tree and goes right back the way it was. Okay. All right. So uh, instructions and that's okay. Part two, read the case study. Three years out, safety checklist continues to keep hospital infections in check. So click the link. You just, you know, click this link and it'll just launch for you on a new page. Read through that. Um, and then uh, apply the Six Sigma DMAIC Define, Measure, Analyze, Approve, and Control framework to the case and share your recommendations by creating a narrated presentation. All right. For creating a narrated presentation, use a tool that allows you to share your screen cameras such as Canva, VoiceThread, Loom, Screen-O-Matic, and others. I'm actually creating what you're watching here on uh, Loom. I think I said Zoom. <laughs> I'm at Loom. I'm using Loom to create this. Um, I have a, a covered couple of different programs, but I really like using Loom, and I have no affiliation to them. But I like using Loom because it's really quick and easy to do, and then it creates a video. Um, and for your submittal, you know, submit um an mp4 or a link if you want to upload it to if you have a youtube channel you can upload it to give me the link or do both for safety one of the things with videos if i can't watch what you submit then um i can't grade it well, a little different than just like a word doc so be just be mindful of that all right the presentation should summarize the quality improvement process recommendations based on the case study and include the following detailed speaker notes so your presentation um and you know there's if you use powerpoint or you know google um slides or i think apple has one you know you use a mirror board whatever you want to create it you know it's not just really powerpoint more like back in the day but you have to have it in a presentation in a slide format and it's gonna you will include the following a title slide and i'm going to show you a powerpoint i created um that's kind of a, a mesh of apa and powerpoint because apa doesn't really have a section on powerpoints so um it is since this is academia, we do have, you know, to consider what our submittal looks like. And in all reality, I do PowerPoints all the time at work 
um, hundreds. And uh, this is a good rule of thumb to follow as well. Okay, so title slide, introduction slide. Now, your content slides, it says one each addressing the five questions. All right, so your content is define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Okay, on your define slide, remember um, on your content slides, you're going to use bullet points and you don't want to have more than five bullet points. Um, that's just too much. So usually rule of thumb three to five and make sure that the, you know, and I'll go, I'm going to go over an example, of it, but make sure all everything's consistent with the same font, you know, the sizes work and things like that. So on the define slide, you know, what is the problem? Problem. How do you know? Um, why is the problem a concern for the organization? So, you know, you want to answer these three questions in, on, in bullet points, three to five, okay? And then you're going to put all the details, you know, what you were right about, expanded in your speaker notes, okay? So if you think about writing a research paper, you write in paragraph form and, you know, use proper grammar and spelling and all language and all that. Well, you're going to take that, put it in your speaker notes so I can look at your slide, look at your bullets, right? And then read your speaker notes then that way. And then, of course, I'll listen to your narration. And then that's how I'm going to grade you if you really understand everything you're doing, you know? So think about those three things and what I'm going to be looking at to grade your submittal on if you, how you demonstrated the mastery of this assignment, Okay. And so as I explained for define, you'll do the same for measure, analyze, prove, and control, and then a conclusion slide, and then a reference slide, okay? Now, like I said, the content on your of your uh, presentation would be bullet points. Now, your introduction and your conclusion is a little different, okay? So your introduction will say introduction, and then you write a paragraph, three to five sentences that inter introduces your presentation. OK, your conclusion is also a um, paragraph, three to five sentences. So that's what the conclusion slide and then your references is just, you know, like uh, similar to APA. But I'll, I'll go over that here in just a minute. All right. Well, that's uh, that is for the majority of it. <clears throat> it says, uh, you know, uh, resources, additional references can help you inform and develop your presentation. So. Definitely open these up as well. Uh, it is a uh, good reading and it's all helpful. Uh, at least at least two references, okay? And then uh, remember to click here to open up your syllabus because that's going to show you, you know, the grading rubric and exactly how you're going to be graded on this assignment. So it's always, you know, something you want to be mindful of. All right, so let's just take a minute here. I'm going to pull this over. All right, so where's my recording at? Is that not going to record? Let's see, maybe I can make it smaller. All right, so when you take a look at a PowerPoint, um, um, so if you think about, like, this is overall PowerPoint formatting. This slide right here is just kind of everything on one that it looks at your entire PowerPoint, all right? So the, the title page, just say title. There we go. Let's update that. So that'll say uh, title page. There we go. Title page. It's your assignment name, school name, you know, course, professor name. Very, It's basically exactly the same as a research paper with APA. Your presentation content. Now, some, you know, assignments say it's, you know, five, six, seven, ten, twelve pages, whatever. Um, I just went over the specific of yours. Uh, so that's what these asterisks are here. It's just, you know, title page, et cetera, et cetera. Conclusion doesn't count towards a minimum count. 
Um, it's the body it, that counts, okay, as far as like pages. Uh, what your body looks like, conclusion, and I have here is a standard minimum two, and that's what your requirement is. So let's take a look at the uh, your title page, okay? Now, on a PowerPoint presentation or whatever tool you're going to use for create a presentation, you want to have some sort of flair to it, um, some color. You know, there's a lot of, you know, options, you know, templates you can use. But always remember, when you create a presentation, you don't want your graphics or, you know, things of that nature to distract from your actual presentation. With that, though, you do want to have uh, some sort of graphics uh, and flair to it because it's a presentation and that's what you, you know, make it a little snazzier than just a basic, you know, Word document. So your title page is going to look like this, your assignment name, your name. If it was a group assignment, which this one is not, if it was, then you'd put all the names there. But for this one, assignment name, student name, school name, course number, course name, course number, my name. And just like I, you know, if you go to the um, the announcement that I posted about, you know, APA formatting, I have my name a very specific way. And then the due date, your assignment due date, not when you complete it, not when you turn it in, but the actual due date. Okay. That's your title page. Um, <clears throat> Uh, page two is a table of contents. Um, and, you know, you always want to have a table of contents for PowerPoint. That way, you know, you can introduce what you're going to cover to your audience. And that way they have an idea in their mind what they're going to see. Okay. So the table of contents, of course, is your introduction, your body, which we know the body of your presentation for this assignment is demand right define measure analyze and prove and control that's the body one slide for each body like we already talked about conclusion and references okay and then uh as we continue on then your introduction like i said write an introduction paragraph not bullet points we know paragraphs three to five sentences and then your body um and we know you're gonna have five slides for your body define measure analyze proof control and so this would say define like that and then you'd have three to five bullets for your define and we also know so you have to do speaker notes so you could just go right down here and lift that up like that and then type your speaker notes boom just like that and fill that in so you it's well covered all right okay you go ahead and that'll be on each slide and then we know the next one's going to be measure. So we basically duplicate that one. And now it's going to be measure three to five bullets and your speaker notes. And you do that for each one. Define, measure, analyze, improve, control. Okay. And then you would have your conclusion. And basically, you know, like I said, it's a paragraph, three to five sentences concluding on what you just presented. Right. And then again, uh, of course, speaker notes on each slide. And then lastly is your references, okay? Uh, and uh, you have, you know, minimum two. And this is how they'd be formatted like this. This is a little different than how you do for a research paper. And so I've given you guidance on how you want to do your reference to look like. Now, another thing, <clears throat> when we think about, when we go to the body of your your slides, you know, you could have your three to five bullets, you know, have a little flare in here somewhere and then put in, you know, maybe the, you know, the Demank wheel or, you know, logo that shows, you know, kind of define measure like that, something like that. Um, or even on your introduction, you know, you give your introduction and maybe here you have your Demank wheel on what you're introducing. Then on each one, maybe it's a little piece of the pie or something like that. So you can add, that's the neat thing, of course, about creating a presentation. You can add some images and things like that that help tell the story, not distract from it. And then and then uh, go from there. All right. Well, uh, I believe that's everything I wanted to cover in going over the assignment. It, like I said, Demaic, uh, I love Demaic. I've used it many times and um, as a certified Six Sigma Black Belt. If you have any questions about DMAIC or this assignment, please send me an email 
and I'm happy to uh, cover it further. All right. Thank you.